With test containers, you can spin up a Docker container having a database server running inside your automation test. But sometimes, creating a Docker image and a database server for every test will be very expensive, slow, and inefficient. In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply test containers with the three test isolation strategies, a container per test, a container per class, and a container per collection. And later on, I'm going to show you how to use test container with your own custom Docker image by running it inside your test. So let's jump into the code. I have here a small API project with a entity framework context, and I have a to-do object where I can add, edit, update, delete, get using a to-do repository. And I'm going to test that using test containers on an actual database with to-do DB context. And first thing first, let's create a new project. It will be a unit test. Let's call it tests. And it is X unit. Create. Once created, let me delete the first test here. And we need to install our NuGet package, which is test containers. Go to NuGet and install test container dot SQL edge. I'm going to install it in the test project. Once installed, let's add a reference to our API project as well. So we can see the test here. So the first test isolation strategy is a container per test. So to do that, we can create a new class here, container per test. This is our first test. So the first thing that we can do, let's create a new fact. Let's say we need to add a new to-do item into the database and test if it's been added. So let's create a test. The first thing that we need is to create a container. So var container equal new SQL edge. Builder, I'm using this, the latest version of Azure SQL Edge, and then we build it, and then we start the container. And now we can create our context, var context equal new to do db context, and we need to pass by the db, db context options, new db context option builder to do db context dot use SQL Server, and we need a database connection. We need the connection string, which is basically you can get it from container.getConnectionString.options. That's how you can create a context. Now we have a context connected to an actual database. We can now create our repo. var repo equal new to do repository, passed by the context. And let's create a to do item now repo.addAsync and we, we are creating a new to-do item. Let's organize our test. This is a range. This is here the act. And later on we have the assert. So in the assert we can get the list of to-dos inside the context. I'm getting the list and I'm asserting that we have only one item and the title is as expected and it is completed as false exactly as we added and later on we need to do container dot dispose okay so this is uh, our test now if we run this test we need to make sure that docker is running inside your machine so once you run the test it will take some time to run and spin up a container and then create the database and run it but we are getting a failure because we didn't create the database actually and we need to do that here by basically saying await context.database.ensure created so that that way it will create the database for us let's run again the test if you are enjoying this video make sure to subscribe leave a like and consider subscribing to my mailing list it is in the description below and the test succeeded if we create another test, now if I need to create another test, which is get to do item, it will be a very similar thing. I have one here and it's basically get to do, create a container, start, create a context, ensure created, and then add bunch of data, list them using the get async and validate. Okay. But now if we run all the tests again, here we are going to create a database per a test. For every test that we have, we are going to create a database. Run all the tests. So every one of them, this took eight seconds, this took seven seconds. In total, it was 16 seconds. 
So how to fix that? Here we can jump into the second type of test isolation, which is a container per a class. So XUnit has a generic interface called iClass Fixture, where we can use it to prepare our dependencies for the class to be used for all the tests inside that class. And to do that, let's create first our fixture, which is database fixture. So let's implement iAsync lifetime and we can now create our container. So we can do something like this. We can create a container. So SQL edge container container equal new SQL edge builder with the image and we can build it. And then inside initialize async, we can return container.start and similar thing for the dispose by doing container.dispose.as task. And inside of our database fixture, I'm going to add this property, which is a connection string. So public string connection string, and it will point to container.getConnectionString. So anytime we need to use the connection string from a container, we can use this property. So this fixture is gonna be used inside our test strategy, which is the class and later on the collection. Let's create a new class, container per class. This is our second test strategy. And to use the database fixture, we can do something like I class fixture, and we specify the database fixture here. And here you can either inject into your constructor, like doing private read only database fixture fixture and inject it in your constructor, or you can simply do it here inside your class using the new constructor, uh, primary constructor here. So after having that, let's create our own test. I'm going to copy the test that we did first and going to modify them a bit. So here, we don't need a container in the arrange, but what we need is to use our fixture dot connection string. And in the end, we don't need to dispose. Same thing for our get to do. Let's delete the container. And here we can use fixture dot connection string. Now, and let's remove this one from here. Now, if we run this class, this all the tests in this class, if we run them all, notice here, the first time it will start, the class will initialize a container and both of our tests will use the same container. And if you notice here, we got a failure. Why? Because our get to do was succeeded, but our add to do test failed because we have already an item inside the database, which is done by the get to do. Now, because both of them are sharing the same database, we need to clean up our test. So what we can do is simply doing something like this, await context dot to do's dot the execute delete, delete async. And we can apply it as well into the second one. Now let's run our test again, a few seconds to spin up a new container and it was very fast. So the first test, it took eight seconds to spin up a container and then later on 45 milliseconds for 700 milliseconds for each test to run. So this is the second strategy. The third one is using a database per collection. So in XUnit, you can create a test collection and use it across other classes. So first, first thing, let's create a new container per collection class. The first thing that we need to do is to create a database collection. So public class database collection. And this is I fixture, I collection fixture of database fixture, the one that we create already. So this is our first class and we need to add this attribute on top of it, collection definition, name of database collection. So now we have a, a collection definition and the name of it is the name of our class. So now if we create a new class, so let's say public class collection one, and let's inject the database fixture 
fixture like we did before and here we can add this attribute to specify the collection collection and you specify the name which is a database collection in that case now let's create few tests i'm gonna copy the one that we did for the class test per class copy them and paste them here it should let's import all the missing it should be working as expected because we are using the same fixture and it will do the same thing so now so this is our first class we can create another class so i'm going to copy that create another class name it collection2 maybe few more and another one collection3 now let's build if you go to your unit test you will see we have three different uh, tests with different collection but we can group them by creating a, a class let's say my database collection you can create a class and move everything inside that class and now if we build we can see here we have a container per class and we have my database collection here if we run this one here, notice how it's gonna react. We'll first create a container. It will take a few seconds to create the first container, but once created, all the tests will take milliseconds to complete. And you will notice here, 44. This is the first test that was running to create the container, and the rest are very quick and very straightforward. But that's not all. The interesting part of test container that you can run your own Docker container inside a test and actually testing it. Let me try to create a new project. I'm gonna create a web project, an empty project. Let's call it hello API. And I'm going to add a Docker support file here. Create. Once created, let me change few things here just for simplicity so i'm gonna expose 8443 for this docker file and it's a very simple it's an empty project and we are having the root to return hello world so let's go back to our test create a new class called custom container test and here let's implement i async lifetime so we can have the initialize and dispose and let's create a container first and an image and i'm going to show you how so private i future docker image image and we need i container container so in the initialize we need to create an image from our docker file you notice here in hello api we have a docker file that we can use to run and build this future docker image so first let's create the image so image equal new image from docker file builder let's add let's give it a name hello api let's specify the docker file directory and we can use here common directory path dot get solution directory and for the docker file directory let's put string dot empty for now and then with docker file we can specify hello api slash docker file let's specify cleanup to be true because we need the image to be disposed later when we finish our test and then build that will create an image from our docker file and then we can await image dot create async let's make our task async so we created an image now we need to create a container so container equal new container builder dot with image the image the future docker image and because it's a web api project i need to expose the port with port binding the port is 80 and i'm going to assign random host port to true with environment you can specify some environments i'm gonna add the environment http port so we can have 80 as our port now 
with wait strategy, we can specify for Unix container. I'm using Unix. If you are using Windows as a Docker container, use with Windows. So for Unix container, and we need to wait until HTTP request succeeded for our request, which is r dot for path backslash. Okay, dot build. And now we can await container dot start async. And in our dispose, we can have container dot dispose await and await image dot dispose async as well. Now we have our custom container. We have our container ready. We can create our own fact. So public async task get hello world test. So in this test, we are going to create an HTTP request to query the endpoint inside the container for client equal new HTTP client. And let's create a new URI. So var URI builder equal new URI builder. We need to have URI dot HTTP. We can specify the host name from our container. We can also specify the port from our container dot get map public port as 80. So basically we are saying the internal port 80 give me the public port that we decided to assign a random host port for it when creating the container and then for the pass value it is backslash dot uri now we can do await var response equal await client dot get async uri uri builder let's name it to request uri now we can do response dot ensure success status code and we can actually get the string content from the response of our content by using read as string and we can assert dot equal the actual is the expected is hello world and the actual is content now let's run our test so if we run now now we will have, uh, we have an error directory that doesn't exist. Let's go back because I think we had a mistake here. Ah, uh, yes, this should be with Docker file, not with Docker file directory. So we messed up the builder here. Let's run again. Hello API, this should be also changed to hello API. Run again. Now it's running, it will try to create the container. Ah, it failed because we need to have the explanation mark. So let's add it in our assert, run again. And it succeeded, six seconds to create a container. I can show you here, if we do a debug, I can show you in the debug logs, how is the container is being initialized here. So it started. So you can see here in the console, we created the first container, we connected to Docker, and then we created the hello latest as a build. And then it's, it's now running. While running, you can do Docker PS, and you will see we have test container running, which is the container needed to run the containers. And we have here our image hello API. It's running with our ports and everything. Now we can continue and you can actually get a response, get the content and it will be succeeded. Okay. That's how you can use test containers in the beast mode. And that's it for me guys. Make sure to check my other videos here and here and let me know in the comment below what type of strategies are you going to use in your test containers. So till next time. Bye.